Hard to believe your mother's gone. I can't believe it's been a week already. It hasn't completely sunk in yet. I'm still feeling... I don't know. Kind of numb. You got any plans for Easter? Dad's going on a fishing trip with some buddies who want to help keep his mind off of everything. And you? Well, it's going to sound weird. I'm thinking of taking a little trip up state. Spending the night at a cheap motel and maybe, I don't know, it's weird. You want to visit Cal's grave? I've never been there. I mean, we always talked about me visiting him there. That trip never happened. Did you want me to go with you? I couldn't impose on you like that. Besides, you know, it really isn't any idea anyway. I probably will just stay home, maybe go to Easter Mass. I, I haven't done that in forever, so... No, it's not weird, and no, it would not be imposing. So yes, we're going to give, visit Kyle's grave Easter weekend. Thank you. I know I tend to use sarcasm and stuff to master my emotions, and... Uh, don't you dare stop now. But you really have been a good friend to me over the years. <laughs> she went there. Oh, you miserable little wretched piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't mean to be critical, but next time I pick the place we stay at. But it was only $75 a night. Yeah, but after sleeping in those beds, I believe a silkwood scrub down may be in order. Uh, ah, here it is. Eben, you okay? Older Eben stands there staring at the tombstone, emotionless. Eben, what's going on, bud? What are you feeling? Older Eben now looks around. I don't want to say it. I mean, we came all of this way, and... What? I'm here for you, man. What's going on? Nothing. Well, what did you expect to find here? I don't know. Clarity. Closure. Sense of what Kyle and I were or weren't. Well, it's okay, Evan. He's not here. The remains of his body might be, but he is not here. You want to stay a little longer? I could leave you alone here with your thoughts. Maybe. Yeah, I'll be over there if you leave. Smith walks to the other side of the stage. Older Eben remains staring at the tombstone. Still nothing. Younger Eben and grandmother enter. I do like old cemeteries. The statues. The family mausoleums. It's like something out of Dracula. Look, when I die, I don't want you think, to think I'm in a place like this. People live on after death. In the memories and stories of loved ones, they do not live in a graveyard. Yeah, I'm ready to go home now, I guess. Older Evan and Smith exit. Kyle enters reading a book. He sits legs crossed on the floor as he reads. Kyle. Kyle. Alice enters. Ah, there you are. What you reading? A book on Buddhism. Of course you are. It's funny how there are so many parallels between the Jesus story and the story of Buddha. Just a completely different way of approaching the faith. Christianity, Jesus is so high above us. We can never actually be on his level, but Buddhism is more attainable. Well, I'm glad you found a hobby. Why don't you sit under this tree with me? Alice sits next to him. Wow. Kind of like Prince Siddhartha sitting underneath the Tree of Awakening. Wait, how do you know about Prince Siddhartha? That's my book you're reading. Prince Siddhartha had a crisis of faith one day when he ventured outside the walls of his father's palace and saw the conditions in which most people lived. Poverty, despair, suffering. Everything his father, the king, had tried to shelter him from. And so he decided to meditate under the Tree of Awakening. Mara, the Lord of Hell, tried to lure him away from the tree, but Siddhartha remained and realized that suffering is a natural part of life, accepting that that fact is the first step towards nirvana. Denying that fact only leads to more suffering, more despair. It is a beautiful day, though, is it not? 
Yeah. Um, would you mind? I really would like to be alone right now, actually. Yes, of course. <laughs> Alice exits. Kyle puts his book down and begins to meditate. Younger Evan is back on his computer, typing. It was, it was funny today. I was out in the yard helping my mother with her gardening. I hate gardening. See, I like gardening. Mother enters. Oh, are you telling Kyle about that absolutely creepy thing you said in the garden today? Yep. A little white gar the little white garden markers we put in the garden to indicate what we were planting reminded me of tombstones. It's like a mini graveyard out there. You are one sick and twisted soul. Sick and twisted. Sick and twisted. Yeah, I've always thought the garden markers look like tombstones too. Really? No, not really, but I can see it. Of course, gardens are kind of a place where death and rebirth, when you think about it, and that's why I love to gar garden. It reminds me of the Greek myth of Persephone, you know, goddess of spring. In the winter, she goes down under the earth to the realm of the dead to be with her husband. The flowers and crops wither and die. And then in the spring, Persephone returns to the land of the living. The flowers and crops spring back to life in the same soil in which they died. Kyle, dinner. I, I gotta run. Talk to you later, hon. Yeah, I gotta water the, water the garden anyway. A few weeks after going to the cemetery with Smith, I went down to New York City to see a show. I still don't know what I expected when I went to the cemetery, but that's the side I was walking through Grand Central Station to catch my train home. Grand Central is perhaps one of my favorite places in there. I looked up at the ceiling and saw all the constellations painted on it. And there in the corner was Pegasus. And at that moment, it was as if Kyle was there, standing next to me. Fine, the person you met one weekend have a pilgrimage and sulk when you don't feel his presence. Do you ever feel my presence? Every day when I'm driving and listen to a song we used to like, whenever I watch the news and start yelling at the TV, especially with the dumbass we have in the White House right now. Right, right, I see where I rank as a priority. That's fine. Wait, mom, I'm sorry. I mean, I really do. I <laughs> So easy! <laughs> so easy! <laughs> burden. Burden. Mother moves closer to older Evan and stands by him. Kyle takes older Evan's hand. By now, Alice and Janet are sitting by Kyle's computer. Alice is reading from a book of the complete works of Shakespeare. When he shall die, take him and cut him out in little stars. He will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night. Pay no worship to the garish sun. That's beautiful. I went to visit his grave today. Tell him that Tim and I are having a baby. That's right. Kyle introduced the two of you, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Have you picked out a name yet? Kyle, <laughs> if it's a boy. Peg, if it's a girl. Peg? Peg. Like Pegasus. But Peg's usually short for Margaret? Yes, but Peg doesn't need to know that. <laughs> I stood there looking up at the constellations on the ceiling. I could feel Kyle holding my hands as he did all those years ago. As we drove around and I showed him where I had grown up the way his thumb would gently glide down the palm of my hand. And the twinkle in his eye, in his eye whenever he couldn't. I guess I felt what I had really hoped to feel that day in the cemetery in Canton. 